Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Upkick MMA episode 229. I am Brendan. Bellator 291, Yaroslav Amoslav versus Yo- Logan Storley. We're going to cover the main card here we're gonna, and talk about the main event. We're going to break down every round, fight by or fight, by fight, round by round, Jeremy Kennedy versus uh, Pedro Cavallo, uh, Bryce Logan, Peter Quilly, and the rest of the main card here. Before we get started real quick, if you like MMA, you like podcasts about MMA, you like fight breakdowns, trying to understand horrible decisions, I do all that stuff here, two or three videos every single week. Subscribe to the channel so you know when the next video is coming out. Awesome. Let's get started. All right. Bellator 291 took place on, what, 225, 2023? I don't know why I'm giving you the date like you guys don't know. You're already here. Uh, something. So this was a, a long time coming, obviously, because Amosov was the champion, um, and he went to fight in the war in Ukraine. He is Ukrainian. Um, I don't think he would get quite the amount of fanfare if he was Russian and he did that. <laughs> But anyway, so he's going, he went back, uh, it was emotional for him, but in the meantime, Logan Storley actually got the belt, interim belt, so good for him, and now, uh, this, honestly guys, this card was okay at best, I'm sorry to say it, um, I, I'm really cooling on Bellator lately, I, the difficulty to watch where they want to want you to watch it live and they won't let you replay it while you're watching it live, that kind of stuff, the, um, the commentary, this time the commentary wasn't actually that bad, I didn't mind the commentary, I thought, uh, John McCarthy and whoever they, they were when they were, because they're in Dublin, um, I thought he did a good job, I thought they did fine, I mean, let's, let's just talk about it, all right? I know I don't sound that excited because it wasn't. I'm I'm telling you, like if you maybe here, let's see what this highlight has for us. That's a nothing. Yeah. Do we have a highlight from the fight? But anyway, I felt like there was uh, a lot of things that could have happened in this fight that would have made it a lot more interesting with some pressure from Storley or. Um, some damage from Storley, some activity, some anything really, and it just felt like it fell it fell flat for me. I didn't. I guess I don't have the emotional attachment to these fighters, so it didn't hit home for me or anything like that. I also didn't feel like there was a lot riding on this, even though I get there is. You know, I just I'm not. I didn't have that feeling going into this, so the outcome didn't have a, an effect on me. All right, so you got here Storley coming out. This was the entire fight. This was it, guys. It was all him. That's it. That's the whole fight. That's it. I know. I I know there was there might have been more in there, but really it's just him. He had the entire fight locked down. There wasn't much to it. It was all him the whole time. Um there was something that landed early on in the fight uh from Amasov he uh, after some back and forth and feeling out pro- a process Storley was back um backing up for a second it was you know that that was a moment in the first round that was worth telling but really Amasov was just landing at ease I ha- I gave him every single round I I had him win in 50 to 45 he landed enough damage in every single round he had a couple moments where he did land some big shots. I felt that there was uh, moments where, you know, I, that's the other thing is I didn't feel like there were moments in there where we would be. Okay, here's here's the ranking. So they have Logan Storley ranked just behind Neil Magny. That's how good they think he is. They have Nate Diaz above Rachmanov. Get out of here. Um, do they even have Yamasov ranked? They do, but it's because of inactivity. He's or they he's not ranked because of the inactivity. So I'm I'm guessing he's gonna hop right back up into the rankings and be somewhere uh instead of where Logan Storley is somewhere like around like 16, 17th in the world. So Amasov is impressive. He's a very good fighter. He's twenty seven zero now. Uh, he's which apparently they kept saying is the best record in MMA, and I'm guessing it is, meaning that nobody else is, has that many wins with no losses. That's impressive. I think he's a great, um, he looks like a great ambassador to the sport. He seems like a hardworking guy. I got nothing against him. It's just this fight didn't do anything for me. It was just a one-side sparring match. And 
it, it, I don't know if Storley was sick. I don't know if Storley was hurt. I don't know if, you know, Amosov is just that much better than Storley now. I don't know if Storley just got, has gotten worse for some reason. I don't know if he went in with a game plan that didn't work at all and he refused to change it. I have no idea. So we, I guess we'll find out in the coming weeks if Storley comes out and says anything. Maybe he won't. I just don't, I don't know. It could have just not been his night. You know, he just was off for some reason. And that's what we got. But it was... If you didn't watch this, I'm not going to tell you you have to go and watch this because it was a one-sided sparring match. That's really what it came down to. So I don't recommend watching this uh, unless you're really into it. And if you lo- you have uh, a dog in this fight and you're really into that game, by all means, man, you get in there and you watch that thing. But it just w- it didn't do anything for me. All right. Uh, Jeremy Kennedy versus Pedro Cavallo. This was good. Um, this was really good. So Jeremy Kennedy... I don't think we have any highlights for this one, huh? Nope. Uh, so Jeremy Kennedy getting in there and putting the guy, like, just putting work on him. Uh, this was, I don't know. I don't, again, this one wasn't the most exciting fight either because it was a wrestling match, basically, where uh, Jeremy Kennedy Got the takedowns. He got the takedowns, got control. He put pressure on him against the cage, jumped to, um, Pedro actually jumped into a guillotine in the first round, and then he he lost the grip and, you know, ended up on his back. That's such a risky move, man. Like, I feel like you have to really know you're going to get that damn thing to pull off a uh, um, a guard pull uh, guillotine. I think that's crazy to me. But anyway... Uh, Kennedy really showed because his last win was obviously over Aaron Pico, and that's when Pico hurt his shoulder. So, you know, there were some talks that, oh, Kennedy didn't really win it. It's just because Pico got injured. But Kennedy went out there and did what he was supposed to do, which is what they repeated on the broadcast repeatedly. And on this time, it's exactly the same thing he did. So he went, he was on top the entire round, that first round, 10 9. Uh, Kennedy with the takedown against the fence and right into the body triangle, and he was on his back the entire round for the second round, obviously getting that one. Uh, so he was up 20 to 18 and then Kennedy got the takedown in the third round and, and got the back again. It was just a dominant fight for Jeremy Kennedy. Um, I thought his nickname was funny, you know, junior bacon, JBC stands for junior bacon cheeseburger. I, I, I think that's fun. You know, uh, the commentary didn't, doesn't like it so much. I think it's silly, but I thought it was fun. All right. Uh, Bryce Logan versus Peter Queeley. So this was emotional for the crowd. I could tell you, I could tell you that because, you know, Peter Queeley obviously being, uh, from Ireland, but. Uh, Bryce Logan did not give a shit. He was like, you know what? I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and win this anyway. So uh, he comes out to Zombie by the Cranberries, and the crowd kept singing Zombie after the music had stopped, and they start. And Michael Williams was reading the intro, so he's like, in the red corner. They were still singing Zombie in the crowd loud enough to where you could barely hear him. You could They were, they were competing with how loud he was being on the mic. That's how loud this crowd got singing zombie. It was uh, emotional. It was cool. Quilly was using blitzes. Um, he was using blitzes in there, putting himself, um, put himself, putting himself into the positions where Logan was able to uh, land some damage back. Logan was avoiding most of the big shots and he, um, he was, he was able to land uh, on Peter without Peter landing any really big shots on him. So the, with the aggression in that first round, at the very least, keeping up with the damage, I think. Um, but I think Peter Queeley did do more damage in that first round, so I did give it 10 9. But it was pretty close. And then Logan in the second round was sticking to that lead low leg. Peter was having issues planting on it a little bit. They didn't mention it on the commentary, but I felt that. Uh, uh, I felt that, uh, you know, his leg was definitely jacked up. So um, that was part of the problem. And then. Peter was in on an attack and left his uh, left his hips out there. So Quilly got the uh, uh, sorry. So Logan ends up getting the takedown, and then there was an elbow from Logan in the clinch when they stood up, and Peter dropped from it and he ends up getting the finish. And then the crowd went silent. Yeah, um, he just went silent. I think this is where the elbow comes in right there, and he just goes down, and that's the end of it. Yep, crowd went silent after that. Um, that's unfortunate for Quilly, uh losing twice in his hometown um, or home country. That is and. Uh, it's unfortunate for him, but, you know, uh, what are you going to do? Are you going to tell Bryce Logan to lose on purpose? That guy went in there to, you know, enemy territory, did the damn thing, um, and that's especially in that second round, really coming out and uh, getting the job done. So 
Speaking of which, let's talk about uh, Janae Harding versus Sinead Kavanaugh. All right, so Kavanaugh gets a win here. I don't agree with it, and uh, we'll go over why. I really wish, I say this all the time, I really wish they would put their damn uh, striking numbers up here. So Janae was able to control the distance early. Janae was the one ent- uh, entering, and then Sinead was looking to land a giant shot after she entered, but she wasn't able to land any really big shots in this round. Neither one fully, neither one of these women really fully committed in this round. But Janae got the better of the exchanges at the distance and landing shots. Not that they are a ton of damage, but she was landing more than Sinead was, and Sinead wasn't doing much anyway. So I had her up 10-9. Janae was staying in a little bit longer in the second round and when after she would start the exchange, and that allowed Sinead to snap her head back with some big right hands. She uh, countered the leg kicks with the straights. And uh, Janae actually dropped for a minute. Sinead looked uh, to get uh, another takedown. Um, it could have been a or it looked like she got another knockdown, but it could have been a trip. But the second round with Sinead's not even, it's not even close, right? That's the easiest round to score here, and it was 19 to 19 going into the third. So the last round was looking just like the first, with both not willing to commit, seeming like they knew that they had a round on each other, and they knew that one mistake could mean losing the losing a decision. So the body kicks from Janae were causing Sinead problems. Her body was hurt, and she was backing up quite a bit in this round. This last round was only close because Sinead landed a few hard shots, in my opinion. Janae should get this one twenty nine and twenty eight. Sal Diamato gave Sinead all three rounds thirty twenty seven. I don't think so. I even I don't think that first round was close uh, that close, to be honest with you. Um and the last round was only only looked close because some of the shots from Sinead looked like they had a lot of pop on them, but Janae had some really good body shots that hurt Kavanaugh but you know it's hard to see those sometimes it's a lot easier to see a headshot that snaps someone's head back than a body shot that doesn't crumple your opponent but causes them to alter their movements and maybe you're not picking up on that so um I don't agree with the decision I thought I thought uh Harding did enough I guess I'm out of my mind uh I don't know if the crowd had something to do with it being so uh lively and obviously Sinead coming from Ireland being the uh hometown queen so whatever uh, Syrian Clark versus uh, Leonardo uh, Sinise or Kieran. Wait, Kieran. Kieran Clark. My bad. Kieran Clark versus Leonardo Sinise. Uh, this fight. <clears throat> This fight went the distance. Clark uh, ends up diving on a double leg to start the thing out. Uh, he worked his way to mount with 60 seconds left, and then he ended the round on the back with a body triangle locked in, so I gave it to him 10-9. Immediately on the ground in the second round, so Clark looked like he was going to be able to get this finish because he's known for his ground game. Uh, he just didn't get it done in the second round, um, which stinks because we had to watch uh, like a third round where he shot a double and he got a single leg. He ended up t- getting a single leg uh a single leg takedown early, and then he stays on top for the entire round. So that's why I said, unfortunately, we didn't see a finish in the second round because we just saw a decision. These two doing? Hey, go lay down, monkeys. All right, uh, that is it. I know this wasn't a long video, but there wasn't a lot to break down here. I promise you. Like again. If you're really into these fights, if you really have if you have a dog in these fights, if you are really invested in these fighters, if you're really into Bellator and you have to watch every single one, fine. Go ahead and watch these. That's fine. If you are a casual Bellator fan and you only watch these based off of exciting fights or ones when there's really big fighters in there, uh, I'd go ahead and give this a skip. All right. Uh, I would definitely pass on these ones. Uh, it's just it's not that I hated hated watching them it's just i wouldn't go out of my way if i wasn't going to break them down or i don't yeah if i didn't do this i wouldn't wouldn't have gone out of my way to watch these let's put it that way all right uh thank you guys so much for making it through these i will be putting out one more video (laughs) one more video this weekend uh covering the jake paul boxing match versus uh one that oh god what is his name fury but what's his first name Logan Paul, Tommy Fury. That's what it is. So I will be breaking that down later. Um, we will see how that one goes. I'm not putting predictions. I don't do predictions anymore. You know, I can in my head, I can kind of think about how things go, but 
it doesn't mean anything. Me saying them doesn't mean anything. Either I look stupid or I look, I can look smart or people just say I got lucky calling it. It, it, it's a, it's a lose, lose. There's no point in me trying to predict what's going to happen. I can talk about what guy guys will try to do and whether or not I think they might be able to do them. But again, that's not what I'm good at. I'm not good at that. So I appreciate HL for stopping by. If you like this stuff, if you want to see these things more often, let me know. Subscribe to the channel so you know the next video is coming out. It means a lot to me. If this is the only video you watch this weekend, thank you so much for stopping by. I got the UFC videos up. I put the 1FC video up already this weekend, so go check those out if you're interested, if you want to see the breakdowns of the fights on those cards. And then, like I said, I will put the uh, uh, Jake Paul fight up uh, coming up soon here. So I hope you guys have an amazing week, and I love you all.